Welcome back to Python from the Ground Up. This is number two, input and output. This is going to be slightly shorter than the uh, the previous ones, um, but it should give you enough skills to go off and do a few little projects, which I will set at the end of the video. Okay, so as you can imagine, we are going to be looking at how we can get our Python programs to output data and also how we can read data from the user. Okay, so let us get cracking. Okay, so here I am with my Python program that I created way, way back in um, episode zero. Okay, now in case you have forgotten, the way that you run your programs in PyCharm is by pressing Control, Shift, and F10. Okay, if I press Control, Shift, F10, it will run my code down here. Here is the output from my code. Now, once you run it once, you should be able to just click the play button here and it will run it again. Uh, be careful though, because if you've got multiple programs open, the play button will only run the most recent one. Okay, so just to be on the safe side, Control Shift F10 uh, should run the currently open program. Okay, so if you haven't already created a program, what you need to do is right click on the project name, go to new and select Python file. Okay, it will ask you for a name, uh, so type in whatever name you want to give it and click on OK. I've already got a program here, um, so I'm not going to create one. There is a shortcut there, if you press Alt and insert, uh, it will bring up the menu as well. Okay, so in the previous video, uh, we weren't actually writing a script that uh, starts and executes the uh, the commands in order. We were just doing commands on the command line one at a time. Okay, from here on out, we're going to be writing programs. Okay, um, so in our code window over here, you will notice there are line numbers. They are going to be very, very useful. Uh, when our programs get to um, any reasonable length and we start getting errors because then we can find out exactly where the errors occur. Okay, so if you haven't already, I want you to uh, copy out this code. Okay, it's print hello world. Now you'll notice there is uh, brackets here. Uh, the correct term for them is parentheses, the, uh, your normal brackets. Um, and inside I have written hello world and I have surrounded hello world in quote marks okay when I run my code it outputs hello world if you want to output text to the screen you use the print command okay you can print anything you want as long as you put quote marks around it this is a line of text for instance when I run my program now you can see it's printed out that text as well here. It will execute every line in order, okay, starting at the first one and going through until it reaches the end of the program. If you make a mistake, for instance, if I did something like this, uh, this is uh, an error like that, and I didn't put the quote marks on the end of it, when I run the program, you can see I've got this error message here. Let's have a quick look at what this error message is telling us. It's first of all, it's telling us the program that was running. Okay, it tells us what line the error occurred in. Line three. Okay, so I can go up and I can see line three. It's also printed out conveniently the line for me, and it says end e o l, which stands for end of line while scanning string literal. Okay, you don't need to know too much about what string literals are at this point, but basically it's text surrounded by quote marks. If there's an end of line while scanning string literal, it means you've forgotten to close the quote marks. Now PyCharm's pretty good at closing quote marks for you. Um, so usually you'll be able to uh, to fix this issue. Well, it probably won't even come up because it will automatically be sorted. But if you get that, just quickly going in and fixing the error message there. When you run the program again, there we go. Another error you might run into is not closing the brackets. Okay, if I have uh, opened a brackets and not closed a bracket, you'll notice there's a little red wavy line which is hinting that there's an error there. But when I run the program, again, I get this time, instead of unexpected EOL, I get unexpected EOF. Any prizes for, uh, any prizes? Well, there's no prizes, but have a guess. What does EOF stand for? If EOL is end of line, EOF is 
end of file. Okay, so it's reached the end of the file uh, and it says there's an error on line four. Well, there's nothing on line four. Uh, sometimes it will tell you that there's an error on, on one line and the actual error is on the preceding line. So if you can't find an error in one of your lines of code, try checking the previous one. As an example, if I just remove the error there, uh, if I run this, um, you can see uh, it says the error is on line three. Well, there's nothing wrong with line three there. Okay, my error is actually on line two. Okay, so if you ever get an error message that says, oh, here's where the error is, you know, but you look at that line, it's like, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Try looking at the previous line. Okay, so what I want you to do just now is uh, practice using the print command. Okay, I want you to print out a whole bunch of uh, different stuff. Maybe you could print out um, the uh, lyrics to your favorite song, or maybe you could print out a poem line by line, or a limerick, or a haiku, uh, for instance. Okay. Um, so pause the video, have a practice with the print command, uh, and then when you come back we will look at uh, something a little bit more advanced. Okay, are we back? Cool. Now, we have in the previous video looked at how to create variables. Okay, so as an example, I might say my name is Mr. Smith here. Okay, I've created name, I've called it Mr. Smith. OK, uh, when I run my program, uh, it's not going to print out Mr. Smith because I haven't told it to. OK, but what I can do is this. OK, you'll see inside the brackets, I've just written name. OK, I haven't put quote marks around it. The reason I haven't put quote marks around it is because I don't want to print out the actual word name. But what I want it to do is print out whatever value is stored in the variable called name. So I created my variable name here. So what this should do is print out whatever is stored in this variable. Well, I've said Mr. Smith is stored in that variable. So when I print it out, the output I should get is hello world. This is a line of text. This is an error. And then it should print out Mr. Smith. So if I run that code, boom, there it is. OK, I'm just going to delete uh, these bits here because we're going to be focusing on these variables. OK, now I could reassign that variable name. OK, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, Mr. Johnson, whoever he might be. OK, now if I was to say print name again, you can see the command hasn't changed. It's exactly the same, but the value that's stored in this variable has changed. OK, so the same command will print out different values based on what's stored in there. Straightforward, right? Hope so. OK, um, there's all sorts of things that you can print out. Another fun thing that you can do is you will notice if I do something like 7 plus 10 here, Whereas when we did it from the command line, we would get and some output. If I put it in a program, I don't get any output. If I want to actually output that, I have to put it inside a print command. OK, so whatever I'm printing, whatever I want to be output needs to be inside those brackets. That should print out 17. OK, there we go. OK. Um, pretty straightforward now, I hope. OK, I mean, that really is all there is to uh, to output in. There's a few other cool things that you can do. OK, so before I move on to looking at input, let's have a look at some of the other things that we can do just to get things nicely uh, lined up. Now, you might decide that you want to um, put some line breaks in your output. So um, here's a line of text test text there we go and I'm going to print out um, uh, this is another uh, another line <laughs> come on let's sort let's sort this out I can't even type line of text there we go Texy text um, good okay um, fair enough okay that that's cool okay but what if 
I want to insert a line break inside here. I can use a special character. If I put a backslash and then an N, you'll notice it's turned orange there. That's because Python recognizes this as a special character. Okay, the backslash N means a new line. So our output from this program should be, this is a line of text, and then another line that says this is another, and then underneath that, another uh, line of text. Okay, when I run this, you can see there is a line break in there. Okay, so, I mean, what else can we do? We can, we can also put tabs in there. Okay, so maybe I want to print out um, a, a, a table of, of stuff. I could say, um, let's move that out of the way, uh, name, what's going on? Um, uh, age, uh, no, let's say uh, superpower. Okay. And then I could do something like this, um, Spider-Man, I'm hoping this is going to work, um, what's his superpower? Spider-Powers, Spider-Powers, um, and then I could do um, Wolverine, um, and I could do Healing Okay, that backslash T means put a tab in there. So in theory, this should be lined up nicely. Let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, it's it's almost lined up nicely because name is um, it's a smaller word than these. Uh, I would probably have to put two tabs in there. Okay, if I run that now, oh look, now it's nicely lined up. Okay, so you can use backslash n and you can use backslash t um, to get some nice layouts to your uh, to your printing. Okay, it's up to you to experiment with that. Okay, but very very basic. Uh, you can print stuff out. Um, you can print out uh, variables. You can print out uh, maths, all sorts of stuff. Now you might run into some problems. Okay, let's say I have a variable age. Okay, I'm going to say, I don't know, 27. Age is 27. Okay, if I was to do something like this, my age is, okay, that should be all right. I don't want to print 27 there, do I? I want to print age. That should be all right, but it's going to look a bit of a mess because it's got it on different lines. Okay, so how do we join them up? We can use the concatenation operator. Okay, now there's a problem here. When I run this, you'd think, right, what's this going to do? It's going to print out my age is and then just add on whatever the value of age is. Straightforward, right? When I run that, Ah, I get an error message. What is that error message? Can only concatenate strings, not int to strings. Okay, age. If you remember from last time, there was two different data types. Um, there was number data types and there was text data types. We've got an integer here, which is a number, and we've got a string here, uh, which is text. We can't join them together. But what we can do is we can convert an integer into a string like this. Okay. If you put str and then anything you put in brackets, if it's a variable, it will take that variable, find out what the value is, and it will convert it into a string. Okay. So when I run this now, it works. Okay. Now. You might have to go back and watch that a couple of times in a minute when I give you a quick assignment to do. Okay. But first, let's look at input. Okay. 
I mean, output is pretty straightforward. You are going to be using the print command loads and loads and loads, so you'll have plenty of time to get used to it. You're going to be using the input command quite a lot, but it's something that a lot of people get wrong when they are starting out, so let's have a look at it. Let's say, for instance, we want to ask the user what their name is. Okay? We can use the input command. The way the input command works, it's similar to the print command but there's a specific way that we have to do this. First of all, we have to assign a variable because we need to store the data that the user is typing in somewhere. Okay, so I can say name equals input. Now the way that input works, it's kind of like print. Okay, anything that is in the brackets after input will be output on the screen. So this is the chance for you to type in the question that you want to ask the user. Okay, anything the user types in is going to be stored in this variable here. Okay, so remember this format. You have the variable name equals input and then the question you are asking the user. Okay, and then let's just get it to print out the name. Okay, if I run this program now, you can see what is your name. Let's say my name is John. I type in John, it's now printed out John. Okay. If we want to make it a little bit more user-friendly, we can do something like hello name. Okay. When I run this now, uh, let's say my name is Sienna. Okay. Hello Sienna. Oh, what's happened here? Okay. We have got everything joined together. There's no spaces in there. Okay. The reason there is no spaces in there. Well, you could probably work it out. Anything that's in the quote marks is what's going to be printed out on screen. If it's not in the quote marks, it's not going on the screen. Now, I don't have a space in here. It's not going to put one in for me, so I have to make sure that I've got that space in there. Okay? So when I run the program now, I can say, what is my name? Uh, let's say it's Yugi. Okay? Hello, Yugi. There we go. Boom. Okay? Dead easy, right? Yeah? Um, Cool. What I want you to do is have a go at writing a program which asks the user um, what their name is uh, and um, what their favorite color is and then gives a response that says, uh, oh, hello, whatever their name is. Um, my favorite color is whatever you know you want the computer's favorite color to be black or something like that I don't know uh, but I also like and then you can say what their favorite color is okay so pause the video have a crack at that and unpause and you should have something like this so we've got name equals input what is your name I'm gonna have a variable called color equals input what is your favorite color like that okay and then I'm going to print out hello name okay now I'm also going to print out a little a, a full stop afterwards so it looks a little bit nicer okay uh, and then I'm going to say print uh, my favorite color is colored color is um, black um, but I also like, and then I can add on color like this. Okay, so if I run my program now, what is your name? Uh, let's say my name is Akira. Uh, what is your favorite color? Let's say red. Uh, hello, Akira. My favorite color is black, but I also like red. Straightforward, simple. Okay, if you're still not sure, go back try a few more things out okay as long as you've got this order correct so you've got the name of a variable equals input and then the question that you're asking that's the uh, the, the format of that there okay now at the moment we've just been asking for some text input what's your name what's your favorite color okay but we can also use it to ask for um, number input okay so just revisiting the example from uh, the last uh, episode uh, we're going to write a program that calculates the area of a circle okay so the first thing that we need to do is ask the user what the radius is going to be right 
Okay, so if you think you can do this, by all means pause the video and, and do it. Okay, so this first line we are asking the user what the radius of their circle is. Okay, so pause the video and we're back. So you should have something like radius equals input what is the radius of your circle. Okay, cool. Now we need to set up a variable for pi. Okay, so we're going to say pi equals 3.14159. Okay, there's our variable for pi. Um, we're now just going to calculate the area. So if you remember from last time, area equals pi times radius squared. Okay, and then we can print area. Now then, let's see what happens. I am going to use radius 1 for testing purposes um, and then I'm going to try a couple of other values. So here we go, let's run the code here. What is the radius of our circle? Let's say 1. Uh-oh, what has gone wrong? We have got an error. Okay, the error is on line 3. Here's the error. So it's something to do with this calculation that we're doing. Type error. Unsupported operand types for star star or pow, string and int. Hmm, well, that's interesting because I typed in 1 there. So radius should be an integer, right? Hmm. Just to be on the safe side, let's use the type command and find out what the type of radius is here. Okay, let's run that. Interesting. Okay. My radius that I've typed in, I put 1 in there. It is not an integer. It is a string. Okay. Very, very important fact. Whenever you type in input, even if you type in numbers, it will be stored as a string. It will be stored as text. Okay, so you can't do any maths with it unless you convert it first. Okay, so after they have typed in, after the user has typed in their radius, we need to convert it. Okay, now the easiest way of doing this on a new line is to say radius equals int radius. If you remember from the last video, from the last video, no, from about five minutes ago, um, we did, um, we converted. Um, a integer to a string. This is how you convert a string to an integer. You just put int and then anything that's in the brackets is going to be converted to an integer. As long as it actually looks like a number. Okay, if I type in the moon I'm going to get an error message because that doesn't even look like a number. Okay, but if I run this now let's say the radius of my circle is 1. You can see it's successfully converted it to an int, and the radius of my, uh, sorry, the area of my circle is 3.14159. Um, let's try a different value. Let's say the radius of my circle is 12. There we go, 452.38896. Okay, so the way that this works, we're asking the user to type in the radius of their circle. That then gets stored in the variable radius. We then take that variable radius and we convert it to an integer and we store it again. Okay. If you were to just type in int radius like that it would temporarily convert it but it wouldn't store it. Okay. So you've got to make sure that you store it like this. Okay. Radius equals int radius. We've set up a value for pi We've then output the type of radius, so we can see that it's definitely been converted to an integer. Okay, and we have said uh, area equals pi times the radius squared. That's our formula for calculating the um, area of our circle. And then we have printed out area. Um, now, that all works. It might be nicer for the user if we give them some uh, a little bit of better output here. So what we could do is something like this. The area of a circle with radius... Okay, and then... Um, Got to convert 
the radius to a string. What have I done here? I've messed up. That should be like that. Okay, now uh, you probably won't have to drop down onto another line here. I'm doing it so that you can easily see what's going on. Okay, but keep your code tidy basically. Um, is, and then I'm going to put a colon in there. There we go. Uh, and again, we have to, because we're mixing strings and ints here, we have to. Um, convert them all to a string. So now when I run my code we should have a fairly nice little program here. What's the radius of my circle? I'm going to put 12 and the output, the area of a circle with radius 12 is 452.38896. Okay? Pretty simple, right? That's really all there is to uh, input and output. Okay? You've got to remember you specify the a variable where you are storing the user input and then you are um, using the input command and you're asking the user to uh, you know what their question is you're then uh, converting the data type if you need to um, for more accuracy I could convert radius to a float so, okay the way that that works Remember, float, uh, a float is um, a number with a decimal point in it. So, for instance, pi here is a float. It allows us to do some more accurate um, radii, if you like. So I could do 13.6. Okay, so there we go. You can see that that's been converted successfully to a float, and we've got a more accurate um, area output there. Okay, um, when you're outputting, if you are um, uh, converting back to a string, um, you've got to make sure that uh, uh, you've closed your quote marks, you've concatenated the uh, the radius uh, or your area, and uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. Now you can make this a little bit more efficient. Okay, instead of having uh, radius equals input, what is the radius of a circle, and then radius equals float radius, you can do the input and the type conversion all on the same line. Okay, so you could do this. Okay, and now I can get rid of that line. Okay, so radius equals float input, blah 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 blah. Okay, now this requires a little bit of. Um, uh, thought to get what's going on here. You start from the inside of the brackets and work your way out. Okay, So we're asking the user what is the radius of your circle using the input command. When they type it in, that value then gets converted to a float. Once it's been converted to a float, it then gets stored in radius. Okay, So we've just managed to condense those two lines down into, into one line. Okay, That is all you need for input and output. Okay, So your mission between now and next time is to write a program which will ask the user for um, the radius of a circle um, and then it will calculate the area of the circle, it will calculate the um, perimeter of the circle uh, circumference even of the circle. Uh, it will also calculate the volume of a sphere with that radius and it will calculate the surface area of a sphere. Okay, So the only input they need to put in is the radius and then it will do all of that calculation and it will output the area of the circle, circumference of the circle, the area of a sphere, uh, sorry the volume of a sphere and the surface area of that sphere. Okay, if you've managed to do that, uh, then create another program or uh, tack on to the end of your program. Ask the user uh, for the length of a rectangle, ask them for the height of a rectangle, calculate the area of that rectangle, and then output the, um, the area. Okay, and Come back next time and I will show you what the answer is so that you can compare it. Okay, that's all there is. Thank you very much and I shall see you next time when we look at conditions. Thank you.